Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Every parent's dream is to have a perfectly healthy child, but sometimes that does not happen. And today we're going to be speaking to a lovely mom who has given birth and is raising a child with disability. She's going to tell us about the struggles, the joys, and all the lessons she has learned on this journey. I can't wait to learn. So you too, get ready. Welcome to the channel. I'm so honored that you accepted my invite. Welcome. Tell the people who you are and, you know, what do you want them to know about you? Thank you so much. And uh, viewers, you're most welcome to Lisa Fosima channel. My name is uh, Ruth Inaluja and I'm um, the executive director for the Spina Bifida and Hydrocephalus Association of Uganda, which is uh, an NGO empowering caregivers together with their children that are directly affected with this condition. Yeah. I'm so delighted to be speaking to you as a super mom. I yeah. call myself super Ooh. mom, but uh, into leadership and management mm. of uh, an NGO, which, which is at uh, the national level. And uh, I'm also an active member mm. Share Just Be There. Mm, mm, mm. That's a lot, it's amazing. I remember the first time uh, we had a conversation Immediately we finished talking, I knew that the world needed to hear your story and your journey. So you've talked about, you know, uh, being the ED of Spina Bifida and Hydrocephalus Association. Mm -hmm. We want to just track back a bit, you know, where did this whole journey start? Thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. the, the, the journey has been long. Uh, I've walked this journey for now 11 years 11, 11 years mm. now and uh, it started small it started like a very small seed yeah that uh, we put in the soil and now it, it grows. has really uh, yeah. fed the, the the world it's mm. it's like a monk tree that is feeding the village yeah. and all that but mm. uh, to get back to where i started from I grew up like any other girl yeah. with uh, very bright expectations of having a family, studying, having a family, having lovely, healthy, jolly children around me. And uh, in, 2020, in 2010, mm. I had my first born. Yeah. She was a very healthy girl and uh, I don't have any issues. And uh, mm. But of course, I had experiences in... Uh, uh, I was exposed to parenting, yeah. right parenting, mm. and uh, in 2013, that's when I got my second born, mm. who is also a baby girl, mm. a very beautiful girl. Oh, so you have two? <laughs> I have oh, two. Oh, I didn't know. I thought you had one. Ah, I have oh, two. okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and uh, when I was pregnant, when the pregnancy was about um, seven months, I went to, to see a guy like any other woman would yeah. go for antenatal mm. and uh, I brought back the results to the to the doctor. Mm. The results that no the first scan at three months was okay. Mm. Then I went back, was not showing anything. Yeah. Then I went back for the second scan. Still they couldn't see the radiologist couldn't see any problem with my child. Mm. And uh, the third one at seven months, between between the second the second trimester and the, and the third, third. Mm. I kind of had issues. Mm. So my my general practitioner, I always used to chat with him, and each time he would just look at me, he would say, oh, "Ruth, as if your edit is near." Mm. And then the other time he finds it, it's different. It's not. Mm. Then he would find me in the corridors, just in the corridors and touch me. And he's like, mm. Ruth, I think we need to go and do a, a scan. Mm. So he sent me for a scan. And indeed, his conscience was very, very right. Yeah. That when I went to the scan at seven months, the scan showed that the child had excess water in the brain. Mm. So... 
it wasn't so easy for me to, to, to receive the news. Yeah. Because even the person who, the radiologist at uh, breaking the news to me, she'd not break it in a, a professional and a polite way. Mm, what because, did she say? Uh, she said in a local language mm. that, uh, Wete geko kubeda na nabi nebiya nebiye mitwe minene. It was like, and I had never experienced mm. it. I had never imagined, I had never dreamt about it. Yeah. So I was like, I almost mean? collapsed from the coach. So mm. I kept quiet. He continued. I went silent. We did not converse again. Yeah. And so immediately after there, I went to the toilet and cried. I called my GP. Mm. And he said, no, don't, don't worry, Ruth. Just come to me. And then we talk about the report. Yeah. So I went. He tried to calm me down. Don't worry. All will be fine. Mm. At times, hydrocephalus is in different levels. The mild one can even correct itself without surgery. Mm. Then the second one, that is when we can go to the second level is when we can go to see a neurosurgeon but this is mild the scan yeah. shows mild, mild. hydrocephalus so i was like okay it's okay and he sent me back after like two weeks because the scan couldn't read couldn't show the, the, the status of the spine cord mm. but for him as a specialist a technical person he knew that in most cases once a child is can shows that there is excess water in the brain, yeah. chances are very high that even the, the spine, spine has issues. Mm. So uh, I went there the second time. The results were normal. The spine was not showing any anything. Dimming, anything. So it was showing completeness. And so I went to give birth at nine months but those two months were really hell yeah. because you have a lot of thoughts you're visiting google to read about different things yeah. i'm reading about spina bifida but my my my, my child did not have spina bifida mm. and by like by scan results yeah they were not showing anything like related to spina bifida mm. and of course there were some positive messages about those born with hydrocephalus but with yeah. those born with the uh, spina bifida, mm. most of the information on internet out there was negative. It was so demoralizing mm. and uh, I was like, oh, <sighs> if I had this, I would immediately go to the doctor and terminate. Mm. Had I seen spina bifida, because the information was completely negative. negative. Yeah. So I went for elective scissor. I got my baby, and while in the theater, that's where the whole dry quality drama started. Mm. Because like you're expecting a child to see a very huge head, it wasn't huge. Mm -hmm. But then the nurse turned the baby to show me the back. The back was completely different, with something swollen, mm. like a tail, like another child, or a hatchback. Like, oh my god, yeah. So before we even, let's first pause there because someone out there is listening to us and saying, but what is she talking about? Can we just briefly tell them, oh, what is pina bifida and hydrocephalus? Because there are people who have never heard about it and they know nothing about it. So that as we tell the story, they understand. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, Lisa. Mm. Uh, these two conditions that I'm talking about, the hydrocephalus. Mm. We have two types of hydrocephalus, okay. the congenital hydrocephalus and acquired hydrocephalus. Mm. The congenital is when the child gets the condition when she's still in the mother's womb. Mm. Then the acquired, when you're born, mm -hmm. even me at my age, I can, can get, get acquired hydrocephalus. Really? Mm. That is if I got an accident and got a brain injury, brain tumor, anything yeah. any blockage of the water pathways in the head okay. can lead to hydrocephalus yeah then uh, a child when the child is still in the mother's womb of course uh, uh, on the scan they would be able to see shades big black dark shades mm. and that's water and then that's what they see and they're like ah oh, this this is a sign of excess water 
enlarged ventricles. That is mm. how they define, they, they describe yeah. the condition on the scan. Mm. The scan report. But uh, hydrocephalus, a child is, because the child's head is still soft and the water is accumulating there, yeah. it allows for, uh, it, it allows more space. Mm. It keeps on expanding, expanding to allow more space for the accumulated water to yeah. stay there. Yeah. Because that's, that it is still soft, the bones, the soft uh, spots are still mm. open. Yeah. Yes. So for spina bifida, it does, it, it's completely congenital. The child gets it when the child, when it's in its mother's no. womb mm. at uh, 28 days after conception. Whoa. Yes. Mm -hmm. So immediately you conceive before you even know no. that I'm pregnant, yeah. the condition has set in. Yes. And it's irreversible. It's oh really God. irreversible. Whether yes. you take folic acid after. or not, mm. after the condition has set in, mm. it cannot reverse. Okay. So when you talk about the the spine has not closed yeah tell us more about that yes yeah. so spina bifida is also in three levels which i might not be able yes, yeah. to explain in a te in using technical terms mm. but uh, maybe in a laymanese language there is that one that you can visibly see with uh, something like a sack at mm. the back mm. then another one it's uh, just like a dimple Mm. or hair around the spinal column. Yeah. Then the last one is when like that the thing is like an open wound, like open, open. as if like yeah. someone was bitten yeah. or it's a wound okay. generally and open. Mm. Yes. So uh, when, I'm, when a child's spinal cord is forming in those first 28 days, mm the spinal cord does not form completely. Yeah. So some of the children are born with that swelling or a dimple-like at the back, yeah. anywhere along the spine column. Yeah. It can be up around the neck, it can be just here at the back of the head, it can Ooh. be at the tail. So wherever it is, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But what I have to say is that uh, the, the level at which it is may be up there because the column is the, the spine is, is is responsible for the distribution of the nerves. Mm. When it is very high here, you will find a child too much paralyzed oh. because that the, the, the supply of the nerves the nerves or distribution was cut off like as early as early from here. Yes, yeah. 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 So mm. that when it is down at the tail, spine mm. tail. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, other disabilities or other conditions will set in, but not so, they will not be so severe. Mm, yeah, okay. and a child born with this condition will be like 90% of them are unable to control their bladder, yeah. are unable to control their bowel. Yes. And they are lower, they have low sensation in the lower, in the lower limbs. Mm. So most of them are in wheelchairs, mm. others are on clutches, and those that are able to walk, especially those that are have second and third level of spina bifida, mm. uh, can, can, can walk, but uh, not so well, well. So actually they, they walk like, yeah. you know, still you would be able to tell that, but still their sensation in the lower limbs is still limited. Mm. That's why most of them will suffer from pressure sores. Yeah. And some of them have had their legs cut off mm. because their wounds are like diabetic wounds. Mm. They take so long to, to heal, heal and okay. you won't stop them from moving around, crawling, just because they yeah. don't feel, yeah. they don't feel them. Mm. So it has a lot of uh, issues that come with a condition. If, for example, the parents don't get to know early, early. how to manage, how to prevent mm. such other occurrences or secondary disabilities. Okay, that's a yeah. good brief summary about it. I think now we are all on the same page. So we are going to get back, you know, they have given you your child mm -hmm. and you've seen there is a bulge mm -hmm. that you're not understanding or you're like, eh, what's happening? Continue from there. Uh, after I had received my baby, I, I, I think 
I, I became unconscious for like three, four hours. Ooh. Yeah, I became unconscious for like three, four hours. Mm. And uh, it was around 11 in the morning. Mm. So I woke up at, uh, I gained my conscious at, uh, consciousness at uh, around five in the evening. Wow. And the child was already in the ICU. ICU. Mm. Yes. So when I woke up, they, 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 they had to, the nurses came around, they spoke to me because I woke up when I was asking for my baby. Mm. They told me you're not going to have access to your baby right now because she had high fevers mm. and all that and mm. you couldn't feed so we could not. And she had uh, an open back so yeah. we couldn't keep her here. Yeah. Yes, so it was not easy. It was not very easy, but uh, I remember by the time I woke up at around eight, the, the, the neurosurgeon had been contacted. He was in Nairobi, mm. and their plan was, we let us call him, because a when a child is born with that condition, they are supposed to receive their first surgery in the first 48 hours. Oh. So they called this neurosurgeon who was by then in Nairobi, had to, uh, to fly back mm. to the country to operate my precious child. Mm. So when he came, he met with me at around 9 p.m. and prepared, prepared me for the next day surgery. Yeah. And the following morning, I'm trying to, 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 to summarize the mm. long story. Then the following day, uh, they, they, they told me to stop feeding my child at around midnight mm -hmm. because she was supposed to go to the theater oh, the early empty, in the morning. The empty stomach. Yes. We don't take people who have eaten yeah. in the theater mm. to, to minimize the risks. Mm. So she was taken. It, it, it was so traumatizing to a mother. You're not feeding the baby. She's just crying. crying. They're trying to give glucose, but just every after a few mm. minutes, she's up crying. And that was the, 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 the hardest and most painful moment for me in mm. life. That my child, at one day, she was taken to the theater. Yeah. I remember I told the team that was with me, leave me. I went to the bathroom, locked myself there. And cried. And just cried. Yeah. And they would come and knock on the mm. toilet, hospital toilet, but I was not coming out. Mm. It was very, very painful because I did not have an answer to the so many questions that I you had. had. I kept yeah. on imagining how, because I asked this neurosurgeon, how do you operate the child? And he told me that we put her on something like a cross to make her straight and oh, stiff, like such that move. the skin is has like oh. I don't know whether he was just joking mm. or but he told me that we put her lie like on something like a cross. Mm. So I imagine it Jesus on the cross. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the trauma. Mm. But anyway, the trauma was too much and it took me long to come out of that yeah. because no one can ever convince you that I know what you're going through. Mm. Even when she has been there, the experience is totally different. different yeah. And when I'm talking to people, I tell them to listen to my story, pick what they are picking. But I cannot tell them that, yes, I know what you're going through. Mm. Yeah, because the experience is totally different. different. Yeah. So my daughter was operated on, she was brought back it was a very successful surgery mm. and it's 10 years down the road wow it's 10 11 mm. actually years now down the road but uh, the first three six months were not very easy because like i said she had hydrocephalus and she had spina yeah, bifida, bifida. Mm. both these conditions she had to undergo separate surgeries, surgeries for, for each mm. yes so hydrocephalus, she went to the theater. Spina bifida, she went to the theater. And like the doctor had told me that it's mild. Indeed, it was mild mm. because after they had uh, closed the back, they told me to wait for, to observe the head for two weeks. Mm. We observed the head for two weeks. And when we went back for review, 
it was a different story. The head had increased, and then the doctor said, we, we need urgent surgery mm. to do uh, another surgery. Mm. Yeah. So it was also another story. Because you're seeing the child responding, the back is healing, and now two months down, I mean two weeks later, they are telling you to go another back to, for another surgery. Yeah. It was a major surgery because it, it uh, required them entering into the brain, put a plastic tube called a shunt, mm. and it's a lifetime thing. Yeah. So because it's a foreign body, after the first surgery, we stayed home for two weeks, it failed. She got an infection. In the, in the brain? Uh, around, well, around the shunt? Just the, the oh, body, okay. but the infections, I think, hid under the shunt. Uh. We first treated, but the treatment failed because that foreign body was still in the body. Mm. So they had to first take her back to the theater, remove the foreign body, treat the infection, take her back to the theater to insert it again. Mm. Even the second insertion failed. Oh my God. So we spent like three months mm. when they were trying to put a shunt, remove port. I, I think it's, it's now comes back to someone's body. Yeah. Some can pierce their ears and they don't get those infections or, infections or, swelling. or yeah. the swelling around the, the, the ear. Yeah. And if, even when someone used a thorn or a pin, and they're, they're okay. okay. Mm. And you find someone going to a hospital, do a very good procedure, but the ear ends up swelling. Yeah. So. I'm not saying that whoever is taken for a shunt, the shunt will fail. Mm. But there are those that experience that, like it's what I went through. Mm. So Blessing had like four major surgeries in the first three months. Mm. And uh, each surgery was damn expensive because we would pay not less than five million shillings. Mm. It mm. was two, five, two, five. Mm. And, and two was just the, the, the minor surgery of removing the shunt. Because yeah. when they're removing, it's not a major surgery. Okay. But when they're inserting, yeah. it's a major surgery. Mm. And remember, they are charging you for hospital stay. You're in a private ward because you don't want any to be any infection. You're kind of careful and you're keeping the, your child 10 years back then. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it, we had very few surgeons and one surgeon would move to different hospitals. Mm. Today he's at Mengo, the other day he's at Luwaga, the other day he's at Mulago, and wherever he would be, that's when he would, where he would tell us to take the child. Yeah. Today I'm attached IHK. Come. And then you go, you have to meet the cost of IHK. Yeah. Consultation, 100,000, mm. you get the point. You're just going for review and he's at IHK. That's where wow. you have to go. Mm. So, it has been a long journey mm. with a lot of experiences, agon and ecstasy. Mm. So, but here we are smiling again, yeah. Yeah. smiling again and uh, creating hope mm. and uh, yeah, building ourselves mm. and also trying to, to, to give hope to, 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 to the community. Mm. So I'm happy that uh, I got this child. Yeah. Perhaps had I not got blessing, I wouldn't know what mothers go through. And I wouldn't have maybe fulfilled my purpose on earth. Yeah. For me, I reached a time and I, I was like, I think this is my right calling. Yeah. And because I've seen so many who are struggling, I've seen so many who come to me and they're like, had it not been you. Yeah. So my girl is giving so many hope. Indeed, a she's a blessing. Yeah. So she's giving thousands and thousands hope, yeah. locally and internationally. Wow. When they see her sing, when they see her speak on TV, with uh, attending to media interviews mm. and so fluent and eloquent, yeah. they're like, ah, this is possible. Yeah. So it is very, very possible. We just need to know that... Uh, we are not the very first people, mm. but uh, once you're determined, committed, you can make the best out of the what situation. others used to say mm. it's not possible. Mm. So with people, of course, it takes uh, 
a lot of uh, a number of factors mm. for you to get back composed and to be resilient and yeah. you're like okay now i'm focusing i want to get the best i just want to let you know that shoot day is happening at canary hotel if you're looking for a space to work you want to have a meeting then this is the place for you they have an offer running yeah you pay only thirty thousand and get bottomless coffee free wi-fi you know, all day long. So please come, check them out. They have amazing food. The restaurant is mm, amazing. So you will have an effective meeting and a good work day. Check them out at Canary Hotel. I had an auntie. She was my good friend. Mm. May her so rest in peace. But she would always tell me to, to relax yeah. and stop stressing myself that I'm in and out of the hospital. Yeah. Like for her, she was kind of disturbed to see her daughter stressed by a daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, and she told me, hey. so she wanted me to give up. Mm. But I said, and, and she said, we've seen so many that have struggled, but their children end up like still being nothing. Mm. I said to myself that I'll not listen to you. Yeah. I, want, I don't want to blame myself in future. Let me struggle when I can still hold this child in my hands. Mm. And mm. I'll not blame anyone in the future when things fail. Yeah. And each time I look at blessing, I'm like, just imagine if I had given up because my efforts, my sleepless mm. nights have, have awarded me really. Yeah. yeah, because I can sit with blessing. And what, recently she was telling me that, uh, Mommy, you know what? I can never forget you. Oh. I just pray that I get money. But even when I get money, mm. I will not forget about you. Mm. Because just imagine if you had listened to people. Maybe some of them told, I think she listens to my interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just imagine if you had listened to people that, ah, maybe you throw her in the toilet. Yeah, abandon, you abandon her. her. Mm. And just imagine if mm. I had done that. I wouldn't be smiling. I go to school and the entire school knows my girl. No. Oh. Mommy, blessing. They see me right from the gate. Yeah. And they know my daughter. They love her. And she's also able to extend the love I'm giving her to others. so many others, mm. happy as with and without disabilities. Yeah. So in this world, she will not fail to have a friend mm. because I've taught her that friendship is very, very relevant. Mm. Regardless of how you look, you need people around, around you, you, but you also have a lot mm. to give back to the community. Okay. Most of us moms have a tendency of locking our children behind the, the doors, mm. thinking that they will laugh at us, I always encourage Ashamed, them, yeah? mm. bring your child out. They will laugh and time will come when they'll they are stop no laughing. laughing. And they will join you to support your child. Yeah. So that smile that your child puts on when you call their name, whether they are able to respond or not, but that smile alone mm. speaks straight to the heart. Mm. And they're like, ah, you see? He even understands his name. Yeah. And you're like, okay, there is someone who is making me active. Wherever I am, I'm able to run back to think about this one person back home. Mm. To me, it is so comforting. Yeah. And that is how I've managed to, to be who I am today. Mm. Um, I, I, I don't want to brag, but uh, I'm a hope to someone. Yeah. Mm. I'm a source of encouragement yeah. to someone. Mm. And I always tell people that being resilient is not an option. It's a must. Whether you have a child with disability or not, or not as long as God has given you people to work with, yeah. being resilient is a must. Mm. Because mm. we are human beings. We even don't understand ourselves. We disappoint and so you, 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 you just have to be awake and alert and yeah. like, when this comes my way, how do I handle? Mm. We cry, but we don't cry forever. Mm. We get shocked, we get depressed, but we don't let the situations to control us. To control us. Yeah. So mothers out there, the child you're taking care of, I always tell people, you never woke up in the morning and you said, let me create a person. Mm -mm. But let us do 
what we can do within our means. Yeah. Let us relate with people well. People are laughing because they don't know. They don't Maybe understand. people are calling our children names because for they, they grew up and those were the names they, they found the world calling us. Mm. I remember when we were growing up, we had a man who was not talking in our community. Mm. And we all grew up calling him Kasiru. But Kasiru is not a polite name. Mm. It's so demeaning. And, but because we grew up knowing that whoever does not talk is Kasiru, yeah. and those are the names we are calling people. Mm. Let us sensitize people together that when you say, Omwano omu to omu nene, you don't describe a human being like that. Yeah. So we tell them the right names, the our right children, term. the right terms they should use. And we've seen so many people who are kind-hearted mm. coming to us and they're like, I apologize. Yeah. I used to say, Emitwe Minene. I used to say, Bontwe, Nakalanga. Yeah, mm. those names. But right now, I, I know, know what causes it. I know everyone is a candidate mm. of having a child with yeah. disabilities. Yeah. But it begins with you, the mother. If you don't sensitize the community, and if you're excluding your child, the world yeah. will join you to do exactly what, what you're, you're doing, doing to yeah. your child. Yeah. So you have positive energies towards your child, the world will join you with positive energies. Mm. If you're negative, that is exactly what is going come, to come back to you. So. Yeah. Wow. And actually, Ruth, I remember when we had a conversation, there's something you mentioned. You said, you know, after you got your child, you know, you didn't smile for almost a year. Hmm? I was like, eh, how almost a year? You know, just walk us through what was going on and how you manage. Like, because right now, of course, you're in a better space. It is the in that moment and that full year what was going on okay uh, thank you so much for reminding me mm. uh, maybe to those that are watching lisa Fosima channel yeah uh, could be thinking that ah what is this one talking about maybe it has been a, a bed of roses Easy. all through yeah. uh -uh. <laughs> so for the first one year yeah like how I, I was telling i was uh, i told you last time we mm. met it wasn't an easy journey. That's when I saw true friends. Mm. The true meaning of love. When someone says I love you, yeah. they don't necessarily mean love. They love you as Ruth with your problems. Mm. They love you because of who you are. Yeah. They love you because of what you have. Yeah. And maybe what you're able to, to give them. But no, very few people can say we love you when you're down down very few mm. and so that one year i saw all this hell on earth and like i was saying i gave up on smiling i did not know that uh, among the things we should thank god for ability even justice uh, the ability to smile should be one of the, the the things on our list of thanksgiving yeah because that one year I stopped smiling on face and in my heart. Mm. And even when I would try to smile, I would just see the teeth. I lost weight, I'm thin naturally, yeah. mm. but I could see that I've lost weight. Yeah. And I think that's when I started getting a lot of gray hair. Mm. You know, it wasn't this gray, but mm. that time, 10 stress. years down the road. Mm. So that stress alone, my hair turned. I had, right from senior two, I've been having gray hair, mm. but that time it was like... A lot. You're aging on a very high speed. You're not laughing, you're not smiling, you've forgotten about the world around you, and you're like, you're in your own world, mm. but you've enslaved yourself just because of the emotions yeah. that you, you don't have that capacity to pull yourself out of that you need other people mm. to hold your hands up mm. so what happened was uh, I remember I was telling you that uh, I used I, I never used to do makeup yeah for that like naturally all the way back mm. I wasn't and I was I used to be natural, natural look but because 
time had passed without me smiling and uh, I was telling uh, Linda that uh, my work experience had mm -hmm. exposed me to quite a number of issues because I worked in the cohort of sex workers, mm. I worked in the cohort of uh, the fishermen on the islands, yeah. I worked in the cohort of drug addicts. Mm. So I had seen quite a number of things mm -hmm. and I had listened to their coping strategies. But in that one year, none of the, 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 the I couldn't remember anything Any like, okay, when this one was having hard time, she came, she, she did A, B, C, D, mm -mm. it was now my turn mm, to face to go it, through it, to go through it. Yeah. And thank God I did. Mm. So it was around December, it was around December that, uh, because I, I used to work with the HIV, persons with HIV, mm. and so I was like, but, why don't we just come together? Because in Tasso, they had MDD. Mm. And persons with HIV, all kinds of looks, they would gather, sing, and entertain. entertain. Mm. The, 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 who, those who were like just watching them could cry. And for them, they were singing while happy and entertaining everyone. Mm. So I said, okay. I think I had some few friends around me yeah. and I told them what I wanted to do in that December month. So they joined me, we mobilized the resources and we organized a Christmas party. Mm. Just a Christmas party to gather the mothers. We were around 25 mm. and some of the children were big and I think my daughter was one of the, the, the youngest. But I had met these mothers when I would go for reviews, mm. for, for, for reviews. And being that uh, I was uh, a researcher, a social science researcher, mm. I, uh, I, I kept on asking them what their experiences are yeah. like, what they are going through, exactly what I used to do with the TASO cohort, yeah. sex yeah. workers. Mm. And, and they shared with me the stories and I was like, hmm. Maybe my, st my story wasn't so unique from them, yeah. but at least I was in a better place. I would mm. cry day and night, and this, and, but I had a job. Mm -hmm. And the others had no husband, had no job, had, no were money. not educated, no money, they are renting. So I'm like, mm, mm. I think I'm in a better place yeah. than some of these. Mm. And others would come driving, so I'm like, hey, there is also this category. Mm. So it was a mixture of uh, experiences. Yeah. So I organized a Christmas party that brought together around 25 families with their Children. caregiver, and most of them were mothers. Mm. Actually, I think we had one father out of the 25. Mm. So when I saw one father, I was like, hey, mm. what happened to the fathers? I started becoming skeptical that maybe like from their stories, I'm like, mm -mm, mine is not in any way unique. Yeah. And I waited for that. And indeed it came to pass mm. that, hey, re I was telling Linda that recently I, uh, I read the UBOS report mm. that uh, talks about men and parenting. Mm -hmm. And the report says that 10% uh, uh, of men have fathered children, but they are not aware that they have fathered them. Mm. Then 45% have fathered the children, and they are aware they are there, yeah. they are supporting, but they don't connect uh, emotionally. With the children. With the children. Mm. Then 40% have fathered the children, but they have abandoned them. Yeah. And only 5%, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Only 5% have fathered the children, mm -hmm. they are supporting them, and they connect emotionally. What? Five? Five percent. Wow. So in Uganda, that is a Ugandan report. Statistic. mm. Statistics. So I'm like, oh, how I wish I knew these things way back. Yeah. But everything happens uh, at the right time. So after that Christmas party, I remember during that session, we had prepared beef, Irish potato, cabbage, name it. Yeah. But we were at some school in Seguko, but we forgot about the food. 
we completely forgot about the food you were until connecting late in the evening mm -hmm. we were sharing wow. crying sharing crying mm. and after the crying session we started smiling now reflecting and we're like ah comparing the stories mm. now uh, we, com we started comparing the story mm, i thought i was in alone the i was alone i was in the one experience in the worst i was mm. but women out there have stories mm. women out there if really i don't want to say if god knew women would not experience hell in heaven because on earth they have women, experienced it even men are experiencing <laughs> hell but, but but women yeah experiencing hell. yeah so from that time up to today, I did not stop there. And actually, that is the moment that birthed mm, the, the association. association. Okay. Before we actually go there, you know, maybe let's just, I want mothers, you know, because we are all mothering. And like you've said, motherhood in itself alone is hard already. Yeah. Now, when you have even a child with disability, it's, it's more complicated, you know, mm -hmm. and I remember when we visited the home and uh, Spina Bifid Association, there's a home where they look after the children. You tell us more about that. And you're just telling us the day-to-day -day life of looking after a child with Spina Bifida. And I want them to hear a bit about it because the truth is sometimes, like you've said, we are complaining as moms. We are not as grateful. We, you know, smiling becomes it's something that is normal. But... There are mothers who are mothering differently, who are going through a lot, and I just want you to share that with them. When you're looking after your little one, what are those things that you're going through every day? You've talked about, you know, they're not able to control their bladders and their bowel movements. What does looking after them look like? Okay. All right. So um, now back to a new page of looking after a child mm. born uh, with uh, spina bifida and... Any, any disability, yeah. basically any disability before uh, walking you through the journey of uh, taking care of a child with a spina bifida. Mm. Uh, Lisa, having a child with disability shouldn't make people think, like shouldn't make people forget about themselves. Mm -hmm. As moms. As moms. Mm. Because we have a life to live, it is so stressful but we are also created and we have a life and we live once. Yeah. This is the point I want to begin with. Mm. I was telling you that I was naturally a natural person. I never knew makeup. Mm. I never knew lipstick. Yeah. I pencil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we, what we need to know is uh, when you forget about yourself, mm. that your energy levels of taking care of the other child yeah. will not be there. We'll go solo. But having a child with disability, it is so stressing. Yeah. It is so wearing. But we shouldn't forget about ourselves mm. as mothers. Yeah. What do I mean here? Self-care. Mm. You have to first, first of all, you have to learn to let go of all the negative energies. Mm. Those women who come and tell you, Simanya, your husband is what? Your cast, your. Those yeah. things. Mm. You have to learn to let go. Mm. Whoever is bringing sorrow to your heart, if you take good care of your family, cut it off. Cut it off. Yeah. Then, too, you need to be sober. You need to be sober if you're to take good care of your child. Mm. If you're not sober, you're likely to join bad groups. Mm. You're likely to go for alcohol. You're likely to, to do, name them, those, yeah. you, you forget about church, yeah. you forget about social gathering, you forget about combing your hair in a mm. nice way, looking good, because yeah. we tend to think that the world has ended there. Yeah. But from the time I learned to do self-care, mm. I saw positive changes around my daughter. Mm. Because, like, 
whenever I would feel like I want to look good, my mind would take me straight to also make my daughter look good. Mm -hmm. If it's buying a nice dress, dress, I would also remember getting a nice dress for your child. For my child. Mm. So, what do I mean here? Not all of us have money to go to the market to buy clothes. Mm. But I mean, you work within, you operate within you your means, and you shouldn't forget about your hobbies. To keep yourself alive, alert, awake. Because taking care of a child, now I'm going back to taking care, I'm going to take, in, to take you through yeah. what it takes mm. to take care of this child. Mm. One, when you get this child, you will go to the hospital. She's having a hundred conditions around her. Her legs are senseless. She's not controlling her bowel. She's not controlling her bladder. Yeah. Her head, you have to observe. Like, you have to do works of different medical fields. Mm. You're the physiotherapist, you're the occupational therapist, you're the nutritionist, yeah. you're the neurosurgeon, you're the nurse, you're everything. Mm. And when you go to the hospital, just imagine if you're not sober. They are going to tell you, I remember my first experience at three months, mm. I was not yet sober. Mm. And I had not learned about these things that they are key factors. Yeah. And I went to the hospital, there was this old Mzei who was in charge of training our children how to, cathet to, to, to be catheterized. Yeah. He got a catheter. He did not prepare me, first of all, yeah. that uh, we are going to catheterize your child mm -hmm. or your child will not be able to pass out urine like an normally. normally. Mm. And so we went, he put the child on a coach, he brought a catheter. He did not even mention to me that these catheters have sizes. For him, he just pulled out a thing. Mm. Personally, I had never seen a catheter. Yeah. Even the one that they used in the hospital when I was giving birth, mm. the nurse did not show it to me that this is a catheter. Yeah. But she just told me to open my legs yeah. and they inserted the catheter. Yeah. They never I don't tell even you remember anything. how the catheter looked exactly. like. Mm. So I take my child, the old Mosei brings the catheter, he starts now trying to trace for the urethra. Children's urethra are, you have to be very taken court to be able to see that, okay, this is where the hole is and mm. insert that. Ah. Mm. This was another trauma. Which, tra which kept on traumatizing me that made me go into denial for another one full year. Mm, mm. Remember, they, are tell, they tell you that when you don't catheterize, mm -hmm. you're exposing your child's kidneys to infections. Mm. Because the, the, the urine is because not coming the, out well. Because the urine is, does not come out well. Mm. So some of the urine is retained. Okay. For me, because of the mess and the mistakes that were done right at the beginning, made me say, mm -mm, never to catheterize my child mine will be able to oh. susu. Mm. Now I went into prayer, I said, faith. God, faith, faith, mine will. Did she? I'm not saying God does not work. No. That's, God works, yeah. but he does not work on pressure. Mm. It's not you to tell him that. At this time, please. At this time, please. I know time will come and mm. have faith. So, this man, he's tried to catheterize my child. Failure to trace the urethra. He kept on, I, mean, I don't poking. know, poking and my child bled. Oh my God. Now, I go back to the perception is in the community that when he, those children, when you catheterize them, they lose their virginity. Oh my God. That's the thinking That's in the, the, the community, myth. the mm. myth. Not differentiating between the vagina and the, and the, the urethra. Whole, yeah, the urethra. <laughs> so I was like, my child lost her virginity. Kumbe, this guy just bruised this tender skin yeah. and the child bled. So for one full year, I was in denial. 
I was not catheterizing my child. Wow. I kept on putting her in pampers and because her skin was delicate, yeah. each time she would put on a pamper, she would uh, get wound, bruised, mm -hmm. like you see vitiligo mm, patients skin, yeah. or people with vitiligo, like mm. as if you, you, you water burnt you, mm. like, you know? So that is how her skin, it all turned pink with this dark skin peeling mm. off. And it was, for her, I think she was not feeling the pain because of no sensation yeah. around yeah. the area. So, hey, I, I, I was like, after like getting, I, I abandoned the pampers and I resumed to using nappies. Cloth. Cloth. Mm. Washable. Yeah. So I went to a window, bought cotton bed sheets mm. and cut them into pieces like nap, nappies. Mm. Yeah, you made nappies. I really made nappies. Mm. So I would put the nappies and then the maid would really make that she she used to make the things worse she would leave the child in the nappies all day all day like for her not even all day but just one hour or 40 minutes we are always just enough yeah to for, change, to change. Mm. and for her she would maybe put in the morning up to break time yeah and that that thing wasn't so it was all a mess. Yeah. Not until I sat down one time and I'm like, ah, okay, wait a minute. This old Musei was teaching me about catheterization. Mm. Maybe he just couldn't see where the urethra was. Mm. So I went to the rehabilitation center. I picked the catheters. Mm without going back to train me how to catheterize because i had seen only that he failed it yeah, to, to get the thing to yeah. get the thing i was like no my little science i studied is going to there help is a me. difference between a urethra and a vagina, and, a vagina. Mm. and the urethra is the tiniest so i went i opened my daughter i trust for the urethra hey it was successful, I saw the thing. Oh. I inserted the catheter and the urine started coming out. Imagine. That marked the journey mm. for us to end the nappy rush, mm. the getting wet all the time. Then the following month, because they were used to review us monthly. I went, I was so excited, I told them I managed. The, so from that time yeah. up to today, 10 years down the road, mm. we catheterize five times a day. Yeah. Not at if we don't make five, at mm. least four times a day. Mm. But minimum, it should be five times a day. Mm. Like we are catheterizing for the child to be socially continent, yeah. not to be wet all the time. Yeah. Now, as if that wasn't enough, we had a problem of Pupu. Mm. She's not able to control her bowel. Yeah. And at the age, at that, uh, in, at, at that early age, mm. we don't do bowel washout. We call oh. it annual irrigation. Yeah. Like water, like you put drip on someone. For yeah. us, we use water. We spray. We, we, we flush it out. Flush it out. Mm. So you have to be sober. You have to learn these things yeah, as a mother. Mm. You cry, the health workers, you're not alone. The health workers are not going to, 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 to work with you who is always crying. crying. You they either, have seen it all. They have seen it all. You either decide to sell whatever you have to have a medical person, a trained personnel come into your home and do these things. Oh my God. Or you learn them yourself. Mm. So we, la we had to learn how to do bowel washout. Mm. We had to learn how to catheterize. Mm. As if that was not enough, we learned how to take the head circumference. Because you have to keep measuring. Because you see. have to keep measuring the child's head to see, and they give you a WHO chart. Mm. There is a chart for girls, there is a chart for boys. boys. Mm. So you have to get a tape measure. 
and then you keep measuring, plotting, measuring, plotting. Mm. There are those mothers who have never gone to school. They cannot even differentiate between, but when you're a mother, my dear, you start to learn. Literacy just comes. Just <laughs> Mothers know. Mm. Mothers know. You can bear me witness. Mm. Because you know when the fevers are high. Yeah. So we had to, to, to get a tape measure. And every morning you would measure the child's head. Mm. And they would tell you it exceeds this point. Run to the hospital. You run to the hospital. Yeah. So she would sit. I would, I would sit and I would make her sit. Mm. Squatting, I would teach her how to squat. Yeah. Crawling, and I had to go to, to dance to her tunes because yeah. not every child crawls in the same way. Yeah. So you would first wait to see how yours is going to crawl. Mm. Then you don't turn her that for you, you're using the bump to yeah. crawl. That do no, more, do the this. Floor, yeah. <laughs> so, and that is where I got. Uh, issues with my back from. That is when they started. Because you always been Now you see, you're rehabilitating a child and you also yeah, need going rehabilitation. Mm. Because as they were teaching me to, tr to take care of the other child, yeah. they were not teaching me how to be careful about my Your body. My, my body. Mm. I would just carry, I would just bend and issues started from. Mm. Before you know it, both of you need Physiotherapy. Money. Physiotherapy, <laughs> and that's all money. I know. Yes. Yeah. So, taking care of a child with disabilities. Not easy. It's yeah. not easy. Mm. It needs patience. It needs a clear mind. You Sound, have to, yeah. if you're to minimize the cost, you have to be sober mm. and willing to learn. Because yeah. now these things, you're the one who is with the child on a daily. Mm. And so, you have to learn these things. You won't be taking the child to the hospital every oh, now and then. Yeah, it's expensive. Yes. And for example, when you're catheterizing a child, they, when you go to the hospital, they will ask you, which color is the urine? How you does it smell? What, how much yeah. amount you get from the child? You have to keep recording all this. We are like business people that I you know. have to keep recording. As if taxes. Always. Yes. So people out there, when you see us taking care of yeah. children with disabilities, I'm not saying that you should be very careful with us, but don't judge us. Yeah, be empathetic. Be empathetic. Join us. Why are you seeing me that my character and behavior is changing? Mm. You just know I need some emotional support. support. Let us not add sorrow yeah. to these caregivers. Yeah. We've had a lot. It's a lot, mm. but that shouldn't be, on the other hand, an excuse for, for us behavior. to yeah. of, 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 of bad and wrong behavior. Yeah. We need to be sober in our mind. Mm. How we treat others comes back to us. Yeah. So, but don't let us not take advantage okay. of, uh, of the mm. situations around us. That mm. is what I'm trying to put across. Yeah. So you need to be patient. You need to be sober. You need to learn how to make relationships. Mm. We, we have what we call a reciprocal, like reciprocity. Mm. You, you give, you receive. You receive. Mm. Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. So you also need to learn how to reciprocate. Yeah. Love others, they yeah. will love you back. Mm. Support others, they will support you back. Mm. And don't do it like... I'm giving you my dress, so I should expect, expect a dress from no. you. But this is from a natural yeah. principle that the heart you mm. use to reach out to others, mm. they, it will come back to you in the same measure, mm. in an equal measure. Mm. And don't say that for you, because you don't have a person with disability or you've never been challenged, you shouldn't, you should treat others with... Uh, you shouldn't treat others with love. Yeah. No, yes. let us be human, mm. human in uh, in all ways. Ubuntu mm. blamo, yeah. yeah. We should exercise Ubuntu blam. Whether someone is just has just lost a, a relative mm. or in all ways, Ubuntu blam to waitag. Kubo mutwari ya inso gamba. Watu avali na avali no mule mubaka It's not crying so much, but Ubuntu blam waitag is in all contexts. Yeah. Right. And whether you have money or you don't have money, 
you can take care of your child. Mm. Like I've said, I stopped taking my child to the hospital because I, I had to learn these things, yeah. to do them in my own home, to teach the siblings. Abamu wetu berewaka, tokiri zabantu balala kuata kumwana o. Train Hello. them to interact with your child. Mm. Give them as much information as you can. Ntimula bomo ano no buaka ababuat chitegeza wet. Buaba aria omtuza wet. Buaba like to avoid the skin damage, you need to do this. Like information. Information. Abaza daba mo buaba tuwa information. Tujia sigaliza. Ah, sija baga anti omana wanga kajamo susu. Banachi tuwa labati ya. Mm. Ola baba antu ntasubula na musa poti inga. Nti umano no baba yetaga clean water. They will not put clean water at display just because you did not give them the information. Let obaba seka, obaba kuyamba, let us share information mm. with all the people around us. Yeah. For the safety of our children. Mm. Because when you talk to someone, you have to make sure that the water is not going to be too hot. It's not the same temperature. It's not the same temperature you should put our spina bifida in. Because mm. your skin is extremely sensitive. If you don't have a skin, you don't have a skin. 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 Stocks are not going to be too hot. It's not all socks materials. Are good. Are good. Not all knickers are good for our children. Eh. So we have to be to give as much information. And if we don't have this information, let us seek out for the information. Look, yeah. reach out to the support groups. Mm. Join them. We have high class A in Abana Abana disability. They don't want to associate with with, oh, with, with others. They class. don't want to join groups. And they end up making a lot of mistakes. Mm. By the time you find this child wherever, because they don't want to come out. But there is a lot, a lot we learn when we meet together. You're right. Oh, Ruth. Oh, you've shared a lot of information. And you know, someone out there, when it comes to an issue of awareness of prevention, someone may be wondering what causes this condition, or in your case, what caused it? So that people out there, because I know I was reading and we've shared before and we know that some cases, most of the cases, at least 70% are preventable. What can you tell us about that? So that mothers out there can see how to prevent. Because when you said that it happens between 28, in 28 days of conception, eh, so what do we do before? Because many of us, maybe we are alert taking care of a pregnancy after we have found out. So what do we need to know? All right. Mm. Uh, to everyone now, yeah. not just mothers with children with spina bifida. Mm. This is information that all. men, women, yeah. youth should have. Yeah. Most of the disabilities, or most of the conditions we mm. have in, on this planet are preventable. Mm. To a bigger degree, yeah. are really preventable. Mm. But most of us get to know that they are preventable after. It's too late. Yeah. It's too late. Yeah. Now, I'll not talk about any other condition mm. except for spina bifida and hydrocephalus. Mm. Like I said that uh, spina bifida, a child acquires it, gets it as a result of ma, ma, gets spina bifida in the first 28 days, mm. research or medical practitioners tell us that 70% mm -hmm. is contributed by folic acid deficiency. Mm. So if a woman, a man is out there, you ought to support your woman, your teenage girl, mm -hmm. whoever has started experiencing their menstruation, mm. or in uh, easy words, all women of childbearing Bearing age, you ought to be mindful of your body, what nutrients you put in your body. Yeah. To prepare for better pregnancy outcomes. Mm. 
if a woman does not have enough nutrients in terms of folic acid in the body, iron, zinc, vitamins, mm. a woman is likely to give birth to a child with this condition. Mm. That is why health workers tell us that at least every woman should start taking folic acid a month before they conceive. Yeah. But now to a person like me, who has already given birth to a child with uh, spina bifida, mm. I stand higher chances mm. of having another child of the same if the deficiency in my body is not taken care, care of. of. That is, if it was deficiency that yeah, caused that it. That caused it, yeah. The 70% of folic yeah. acid deficiency. Mm. So what do I mean by folic acid? Folic acid are kind of yeah. nutrients that are condensed together in a capsule, a, a, a capsule or a pill form. Mm. Most of the people or women call it a dagala. Uh -huh. They are not just a dagala. They are not pills. That's food. For the body. For the body. And it does not only prevent spina bifida, yeah. but it is responsible for the production of blood cells that are, and are, are responsible for the formation of mm. the body, of, mm. of, of, of the, the fetus of the yeah. child mm. when they are in the mother's womb. Mm. So you prevent a lot of issues around uh, neurological issues when you're taking Yes, the folic acid. The folic acid, the congenital issues when you're mm. taking folic acid. So, obweko bwa bachala ba nangi, tuvembo bi unya bubi, tu gambo obweko obonze bumpu nira bubi and mm. withdraw. Yeah, oh, like, I don't need, yeah, me I'm okay. My first child, I didn't swallow. That smell you're running away from is not, you cannot equate it to having this child. Yeah. Please, guys. So, mm. men, let us support our women to visit, to go for preconception care mm -hmm. in the hospital. Mm. That preconception care will, that's when they can even advise you on how to prevent sickle cells. Mm. They can pre teach you to how to prevent uh, cerebral palsy that, that, that usually yeah, comes yeah, as a result yeah. of delayed labor. They will teach you mm. a lot of things. And other, other, other issues that mm. are preventable that you need to be aware of before you can go for, you know. If you're on a particular drug, they will tell you that, oh, if a woman is taking this particular drug, they are not supposed to conceive. Yeah. But most of us, of course, in Uganda, we don't plan for pregnancies. Mm. That is one. But let us feed our bodies on right. the right foods. Yeah. Someone can tell you that in Uganda, don't we have foods that are rich in folate mm. instead of me taking a pill? Mm. This pill is good because you're sure of, of the, the, uh, the, the level, the level. <laughs> that of, of nutrients yeah. that you're putting in your body. Mm. We have a lot of foods that are rich in folate, but preparation, storage, at times reduces. reduces like greens for example like greens mm. we have greens in uganda we have oranges mm. we have liver we have red beans we have cereals basically and you you know that green plate when i say green plate i think yeah. most of we you there, you're able to understand <laughs> it every woman must have that green plate yeah almost every day yeah but we don't stop mm. we put fruits in the fridge forever and then we pull out yeah then the thing nutrient has reduced yeah? the nutrient has reduced mm. we want to see kadodo mm? right. even in the dodo netumufumbanga vitamins is so evaporating just nausea losing and process yolk form so all those things because we are not trained how to preserve the nutrients even when you're cooking. Newe sanga nga gogamba ndi ya dodo na yenga temuli wa de vitamin. No sanga fenengo kwenge la bamu kubamigo, bamu exposing akumusana. This vitamin thing is very, very 
Chantondo, it's it evaporates very easily mm. when exposed to sun or heat. Yeah. So before you can even sell a metric for as folic acid visit a health facility, mm. you talk to the person mm. that I want to start on folic acid. What is the dosage? Yeah. Because we have the 400 mg mm. and then we have the 500. Mm. But usually we recommend 400. Mm. So that of 400. And in Uganda here, I think we, we have the one of 500. Mm. So they will advise you on what's best. how to mm. take it and what's best. So for me, right now, I'm taking it mm. because you never know. Yeah. So I don't want to repeat, to go through what I went through. Yeah. But that is 70%. I want the viewer out there to get me very clear. Yes. And consistency also matters. We've got some women who are having more than one child with this condition. And they'll tell you, I've been on folic acid. From I've been taking before, folic acid. During, mm. But when you sit with them in a corner, they will confess that, okay, I would, I would take, get a break, mm. take, get a break. And what the break is more than when they are on taking. that. Taking. Yes. So... We just need to be very careful, very yeah. sober, and cooperative with the... We relate well with mm. the medical practitioners. Mm. We visit the health facilities. Preconception care is very, very key. Yeah. Let us eat well those foods that are rich in folate. Mm. But where you think you're at a risk, please, please visit the health facility and get mm. folic acid. Mm. Then other percentages, it can be a result of like genetic, it can be genetical. Yeah. That one, you have no choice. Mm. It can be as a result of the medication you're taking. Mm. It can be a result of uh, maybe other factors, but 70% is nutritional okay okay yes mm. then for hydrocephalus when a child has a damage on the spine chances are very high that the flow of the cerebrospinal fluid will be tampered with or will be compromised yeah and chances are very high that a child will have developed hydrocephalus mm. then for a quiet or if a child is in my womb and i get infection that cross up to crosses up to the yeah. child. You mean like a UTI or which kind of infection? I, I think any any infection, as mm. long as it uh, affects the child's health. Okay. Like I get fever. I mean malaria. Mm. It can cause it. Yeah. Any infection that crosses from the mother to, to the, the child, child, the fetus, the fetus mm. can cause any defect. Yeah. Any defect, yeah. and you don't know which defect this might bring. Yeah. Or I'm pregnant and I get an accident, and that accident really affects the baby. Mm. They can get hydrocephalus mm. or other defects. And uh, yeah, basically those are the issues that can maybe result into a child getting hydrocephalus when she's mm. in the mother's womb. But then for acquired hydrocephalus, the one we get when you, 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 you give birth to a child who doesn't have any issues, mm. but at six months, one year, two years, you see a child changing. changing. That child, that is as a result of uh, maybe meningitis, yeah. malaria, those high fevers. Mm. And you know, that is why when we take the child to hospital, the health workers start by checking, checking the fontanel. Um, Are they soft? Are they still working? Mm. Are they not bulging? Because any soft, any normal fontanel is supposed to be a little bit low, mm. soft, and kakuba, uh, kampo, kakuba blonji. So our woman here and your kampo, but some of the time that kampo is very okay in mm. shape. Then we go for other things. Na yomu wana inzo kubwa bazade tu ina tendence yoku lekaba na muntebe na oh. rollinga na agwa. Tuwa igo kugulo obutebo obuo, obuta nina straps, omu wana nava mukatebe na agwa. They can hit their heads mm. na malidi zanga afunyechi. Hydrocephalus. Uh, hydrocephalus. Mm. So those accidents in children, 
emisujja mu bana ze zimuko the biggest causes okay. major causes mm. of hydrocephalus uh, wow. in children oh wow mm. guys i don't know about you but i'm learning a lot and you know as i met ruth you know just to give you guys a back story i met ruth because of a project that we are working on you guys have all heard of mums gather and we felt like we needed to support other mums in the community because so many times like i've mentioned we are in ourselves like you know my children my family everything is okay but then we need to start looking out and see how to support other mums other mums were mumming in a different way you know and that's how i actually got in contact with ruth and she's going to tell us more about you know spina bifida and hydrocephalus association because as mums gather we said you know let's support them um, they have a center where they have the kids who come in and they facilitate them rehabilitate them and the mums who are also staying there so as mums gather we decided to support them so we are actually on a drive where we are collecting um, money you know to support them they need food toys that kids need so many things you know and you're housing them mattresses it, it can be a lot you know i can imagine so we are doing that kind of drive you can check out our pages uh, lisa kosima and daisy sunshine for more information to see everything that we are doing but ruth is going to tell us about maybe that's where um, the association started and maybe briefly what you're doing for the mums and how people can come on board to support um, the center and to support your cause okay thank you so much lisa yeah uh that the spina bifida association is uh it, it's a big thing yeah but you will allow me on this program at uh, Lisa Kusima channel, mm. I concentrate on the House of Hope project. Yes. But overall, we aim at improving the quality of lives of these people that are living with this condition, mm. but also improve the quality of life of their caregivers. Yeah. We are caregivers that came together. We are the vision bearers. Mm. And some of our children have now turned into youth. So we want to phase out. We want to stay us on the side and they take on the mantle. Wow. So at a, in our organization, our major, major focus is on empowerment, mm. advocacy, mm. and awareness raising. Yeah. Empowerment is, uh, is, is broad. It has so many different components therein. Mm. And so it's advocacy and awareness raising. Mm. So under empowerment, we majorly train and mm. also equip ch children and youth with life or soft skills mm. so that they are able to be somewhat in the, uh, gain some degree of independence. Mm. Because everyone on this earth would need to somewhat be independent. Independent, yeah. We train to how to, them to catheterize themselves. My mm. daughter learned how to insert a catheter, a catheter by herself mm. at the age of five. Yeah. So that was another huge load that Relief. was got yes, taken off. Yeah. Was taken off me. So we train them. How do you communicate your challenges? How do you assertively get mm. what you want in a good way, mm. but not to say, Helpless. You're helpless. Uh -uh. We don't want them to grow like that. So we empower them with soft skills, soft mm. life skills. We empower caregivers on how to support the journey of their children, mm. both via, uh, via education, via health, and in general human rights yeah. way. Then uh, we also train support teams. What do I mean by support teams? We train teachers, we go to schools and we train teachers on how to handle children with disabilities. Mm. We train learners, peers without disabilities on how to associate with their friends. their friends. We train the community leaders, then we do advocacy at local and national level and internationally. Mm. Such that there is a, we are sure that there is a change in attitudes, yeah. there is change in practices, mm. and we influence policies, at least to be designed in a way that uh, uh, considerate of persons with, with disabilities. disabilities. Mm. So, when uh, uh, when we, we we are doing all this, 
we partner with different stakeholders, mm. organizations, civil society organizations, NGOs, international NGOs, the government, private sector, basically almost everyone. And now I'm here with Lisa Kusima and her mm. team. We work with the media. I think you've seen us all over. Mm. So we are doing a lot to change our communities, but more so to impact yeah. the communities. Mm. So as we are doing all this, like I've been explaining, a child with spina bifida and hydrocephalus, these are called specialized conditions, okay. that they will need special attention. Mm. But it's a mild, a mild disciplinary condition that will need different people to work together. Mm -hmm. But how do they work together when they are not coordinated? Yeah. One single person will need a urologist, an occupational therapist, mm -hmm. a physiotherapist, a neurosurgeon, a social worker, a psychologist, a counselor, wow. mm. all those. And there is no hospital you're going to find all these people in one place. Okay, yeah. You understand? Mm. So there must be someone who is willing to coordinate the care mm. of these children. So because of the challenges that most of us were experiencing in our, in our journey to access the right care, we put up a center that we call House of Hope. Yeah. We, at House of Hope, we do what we call SCE. Mm. We accommodate, mm -hmm. we, care, we coordinate care, mm. we empower. Mm -hmm. That is a small project. So far, based in Kampala, yeah. we wanted to, 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 to have a pilot project and then we see how effective this center can be, how impactful, before we could think of expanding to other regions. Mm. But as an association, SHAO, Spina Bifida and Hydrocephalus Association of Uganda, we are in all regions of the country, mm. north, east, west, and central. Mm -hmm. But for this particular project, House of Hope, yeah, the pilot Kampala. project is in Kampala. We started it in 2021. Mm. So when we started, we started it out of necessity and yeah. uh, compassion, I should say, mm. because we would see, personally, I was tired of seeing mothers not returning for reviews. Mm -hmm. When you go to hospitals and ask them about follow-up, they don't know where the families are. Yeah. Two, these mothers would always come and sleep on the buses. Because they're coming from far. They are coming from far, looking out for Katalemwa, looking out for Mulago, looking out for Cure Children's Hospital. Mm. Just imagine a mother carrying a child with a very huge head mm. in her hands seated on the bus with one pamper and maybe torn bed sheets just on the bus and they are going to the hospital mm. when they get to the hospital they will all be exhausted to even speak to the health workers or to listen from the health workers mm. even the health workers will start complaining things. Mm. You leave home with a different condition by the time you get to Chua Children's Hospital. You have another. The child has fatigue, the whole body is aching, the child is irritable, and they're like, she has got another issue. Mm. So we sat, we sat down with my team, and I came up with this idea of, how about if we put up a center mm. that can act as a, a, a home away from home? to be like a stopover yeah. where these mothers can come, mm. rest, continue to the hospital. Yeah. From hospital, return. Review. Mm -hmm. And if they have a very short period of review, they wait yeah. at the house. Mm. And wow. this is exactly what we started doing. Mm. And in the first year, we were overwhelmed. Mm. Because since 2021, Every year we house between 200 and 280 families wow. that come to access our services. Yeah, yeah. And these people come from everywhere. All over. 
like last year was overwhelmed. Mm. I had a family from South Sudan. Mm. I had a family from Democratic Republic Congo. of Congo. And we get people as far as all corners of the country. And some, the, the good thing is that now that partners have got to know us, they send them in groups. Mm. We have a team, like we have a team of uh, organization that sends them from uh, Chegegua, another one in Muvende, mm. another one in Masaka. Like, at least those ones are able to come in group that mm. even when you don't speak the same language, yeah. there is another person in the group to interpret. Mm. So language barrier, barrier is an issue at mm. our center. But like I've said, we offer S. We accommodate these mothers. Yeah. We give them sponsored food. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to say free food mm. because we don't have free it's not food. Free. Someone is paying. Someone is paying, yeah. but the families do not pay. Yeah. We give them accommodation in good blankets, mattresses, and bed sheets. Mm. And then we try to empower them while at the center. Mm. We train them what this condition is all about, mm. how do you manage this child in mm. a home setting, mm. how do you communicate to teachers if the child is going to school, how do you evaluate your child to mm. make sure that you avoid, um, you avoid the delay in accessing care yeah. in case there are other signs and symptoms of what, for you to worry about. Mm. Uh, we train them in... Uh, income generating activities, mm. though it is still at a small scale, yeah. but we train them in liquid soap making mm. and uh, Vaseline making. Wow. Our children's skins are very delicate and not every Vaseline, Vaseline will, work. will work on their not skins. Every not every petroleum jelly. Not every petroleum jelly will work on their yeah. skins. And some of them cannot afford this Vaseline. Mm. So when they come and we assess the socioeconomic status of that the mother, mm. at least when we have some teens, mm. or if she, con she, she participated in the making mm. of, of, of Vaseline, she goes away with a teen. Yeah. She goes away with a teen. And uh, that, that, that is how we, we, we support one another. And then for care coordination, we have a patient liaison officer. Mm. We work closely with Mulago Referral Hospital and Pure Hospital, then Katalemwa Rehabilitation Center, mm. and then in other regions. Mm. We also have rehabilitation centers that we work with. Mm. And we also work with other partners, health centers, and such that when a child in the, is in the house, the parents have to consent yeah. that I'm in this house, I'm not in the hospital. Mm. In case my child, God forbid, the worst happened to my child, that, as soon as I'm entering into this house, it's not our full responsibility. Mm. Pa parents, we, we, we are very, very sensitive when it comes to child protection issues. Yeah. We make sure that we ensure safety of these families, mm. but we are not a hospital. Mm. In the house, we have temperature, sorry, thermometers. Mm. We observe to maximum. We have a nurse, we yeah. have a midwife, mm. we have a social worker. Like a child would be in the home setting. Mm. And we make sure that we build the capacity of our staff such that we avoid mistakes and risks. Yeah. You're, you've come to our center to train you on how to catheterize and inject uh, oxybutin in your bladder. Mm. Before we start you on that, we make sure that you go to the health facility, yeah. they take scan of your bladder mm. and the kidneys. Mm. Such that we have a full report that by this time one, start. Mm. by the time you we start. You're coming, a child is having fevers in the night, our office is just opposite a healthy facility. Yeah. Once a child is behaving in a way we don't understand, we don't keep the house in the, the, the child, child in the, in yeah. the house. Mm. Wow. We immediately just cross the road. The gates are opposite. Mm. We just cross to the other side and we tell the technical people, the health workers, evaluate this child further. If it's a referral, you go. we refer. Mm. If it's just a flu and that can be managed at that level, mm. we support the family to manage the child. Mm. 
wound management, we do daily dressing at, at house, but upon advices from, from the, the health workers. The, the health workers. Mm. So like usually they tell them that you're going to dress daily and come back after a month. Mm. So, and a child is coming all the way from Fort Potro. So they yeah. keep at the house, we support with the daily dressing mm. until the next review. So basically that is what we do at the House of Hope mm. and uh, it is still a small home. Mm. We are praying to God to give us a big land and a big house mm. where we can have these people. Because in Uganda the cases are very many. Yeah. Like every year we get about 6,000 mm -hmm. and most of them are vulnerable. Most of them are vulnerable mm. and they don't know where to access services. Cool. Yeah. But uh, we, we, we are continuing to advocate and convince the government that we are your people. We need these services Think about us, yeah. everywhere. And I'm happy that the government is now coming up with a different strategic plans mm. and uh, revi revising their rehabilitation mm. uh, plans. Mm. And they are including disability into That's the amazing. rehabilitation yeah. structure. Mm. So maybe that one would help. Mm. And then the, 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 the Ministry of Education is working to make sure that at least they make inclusive education compulsory, train the teachers, equip them with the skills. Mm. When this will come, I don't know. But I'm happy that the different Lost private yeah. sector different organizations have mm. come on board mm. to equip teachers with the skills mm. to support these learners. Mm. You find an organization working on uh, enhancing wash facilities, mm. improving wash facilities in schools. Yeah. You find another one putting equipment in the hospitals mm. and maybe slowly by slowly. Mm. And I know individuals are out there willing to do a lot, but they don't know they how just to. Don't know. They yeah. don't know where to put the efforts. Yeah. So when we come out like this and we create public awareness and we advocate and lobby I know someone there listening to us can mm. say I'm bringing I'm giving you milk on a monthly mm. a fridge a fridge yeah. and because some of that the, the medication needs needs uh, to be refrigerated yeah. yes but we don't have a fridge at the center mm. we need to feed children well yeah. we don't want a woman to come from Chegegua comes to House of Hope and feeds on posho and beans mm. on a daily. Please. So we try our level best mm. to give balanced diet, yeah. but at times where the resources are really minimal, yeah. yes, you will find us eat posho and beans and yeah. the children will smile because you've put food, food on the table. On the yeah. table. Yeah. So yes. guys, please, we are running this uh, drive to support Spina Bifida and the House of Hope because these children really need us. So please look out on our pages, you know, uh, this mom's gather, we want to do it a bit differently. So we're doing it in two phases. We have uh, supporting of the community and then we shall have the mom's gather event that we always have annually to just celebrate. So the first phase is supporting others. The second phase is celebrating and tapping ourselves on the back because as moms, really, we need to smile. We need to care for us, you know, and just learn from one another. So please save the date. 11th May is the event. Um, but all these months before, we are supporting and we are visiting the home. You know, they're going to learn how to make bleach. Uh, we're going to cook for them. And it's going to be just a happy time. So that in those moments, they also feel like, wow, you know, let's have some good food. Let's laugh together and just um, have a good time. So we are also getting donations. Please send toys. The children need toys. They need bedding and so much more. Please support this cause. Thank you so much, Ruth, for sharing with us your story and how you're mothering and your strength and resilience and everything you've shared with us. Honestly, I was touched. I was touched about everything you're doing. Now you're working in purpose. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, beautiful ashes. Anyway, something <laughs> happened. It was not what we expected, but mm. you're, you're helping so many people in society. Uh, so... I think God is really working. So I don't know if you have any last thoughts you want to tell parents out there. Uh, yes, what I, what I have to, in my closing remarks, mm -hmm. I just want to appreciate the public yeah. out there for supporting us, loving us, not mm. throwing stones mm. at us. But uh, let us continue to support. 
And uh, if you're supporting, kindly bring things that are in a good shape. Uh -huh. We need nice dresses. We need to look beautiful. The mom, yeah, we need yeah. some, at least a salon once in a while. Yeah. We need shoes. We need toys. We need mattresses mm. that are good. And so please, if you're coming to support, yeah. come genuinely. A gift that you would also want to receive. That gift you would also want to receive back. Mm. And then to the caregivers, I would like to, from the bottom of my heart, to say thank you for the great job mm. you're doing out there. Mm. The smile you're putting on our children's faces, mm. the support, the sacrifice. I understand that our home is supposed to be a cradle. Yeah? Mm. When I say a cradle, I mean like in a place where a child can be held tightly, hugged, smile, and mm. you know, thank you for making your families, your homes a cradle place for our children to stay. Mm. And don't forget about self-care. Yeah. Your life is very, very important. Smile when you can. Put on a lipstick. Mm. Put Ooh. on, you know, put on your nice dress. dress. Don't let the world know that you don't cry. If you want to cry, please come to me. I will hold you tight. Mm. And you cry on my shoulder. Then mm. thereafter we shall laugh. But thank you so very much. Keep doing what you're doing best yeah. and don't listen to negative energies. Mm. Don't embrace them. Mm. Just drop all the negative energies, negative vibe, and let's work together. Let's support one another. Mm. Let's build one another. Let yeah. us not break, but let us build one another. For God and my country, I love hey. you. Thank you so much, Ruth. we have been honored to have you on the channel. I hope you guys have learned something and you're going to you know, contribute to this cause. My name is Lisa Kusima, as always, I'm here to inspire.